Okay, so uh, as we all know, the debates in our national uh, parliaments are a verified communication channel between the elected political representatives and the society that elected them. But they are much more, they are also a reflection of the interests of the whole national community. So all the important issues we talk about in the country are being talked about in the parliament. So mm -hmm. it, it's very important data and as such they need to be made accessible and comprehensible, and especially in the times that we have nowadays, the times of global crisis. So uh, recent advances in artificial intelligence have made it possible to analyze such data in multiple languages. And we should be able to use text mining methods, natural language processing methods to compare the data synchronically and diachronically in a cross-lingual context. As a result, we should be able to uh, offer both the scientific and civil communities uh, the ability to um, track the pan-European discussion on important issues. So uh, we need to uh, be able to make this data comparable, interpretable, and highly communicative to um, all groups of the society, not just citizens, but also researchers, journalists, NGOs. So this data is really valuable and uh, it's quite similar across Europe. We all have parliaments and people are discussing important things there. Uh, so the data is available, it's uh, timely released because we have this um, Right to Information Act that mandates timely release of this data by national parliaments, but each country has a slightly different parliamentary system, parliamentary offices publish the data in slightly different way, every office in their own way. And the data comes in different formats with different metadata, uh, the debates have varied structure, so in this original form, they cannot be compared or analyzed as such. But we managed to overcome this problem uh, by uh, leading and creating and being a part of a Clarin Eric founded project, which we called Parliament. And in this project, first we proposed a harmonized representation format for parliamentary debates. Then we compiled a collection of uh, parliamentary data sets for 17 countries and 16 languages. We converted the data into our new format and we processed the uh, uh, compiled corpora linguistically and made them available for download and search so that all interested parties can extract uh, the relevant comparable information. And finally, we initiated several use cases showing how Parliament, corpora, and related technologies can serve a variety of uh, societal needs. So when we started um, the Parliament initiative in 2020, you all remember that we had uh, the outbreak of the COVID pandemic then. So uh, we created a virtual subcorpus of COVID-19 to enable the uh, uh, tracking of various phenomena in the data, such as the change in the topics being discussed before and after COVID, uh, or the impact of the gender of MPs on the discussions. And uh, we uh, managed, we, we, we made this data comparable uh, in this respect. Uh, but this methodology is also um, scalable to other events as well, such as economic crisis, environmental issues, or uh, the current uh, Ukrainian-Russian war. So we can create virtual corpora uh, and uh, use the same methodology we used for COVID for other events. And so researchers can observe democratic processes through parliaments by analyzing, for example, uh, speaker and party statistics, so who spoke more on which topic, who changed their mind, which party defended or opposed, uh, which proposals, and we can analyze topics, uh, which topics were popular and what time and how they changed and interrelated, uh, and we can also uh, track uh, time and context down social tendencies. So. The data set, the joint representation model, the common metadata structure and linguistic annotation are uh, among the main achievements of the project, but I guess there is much more. So I call it the parliament infrastructure. Uh, it is good practice guidelines, violation procedures, documentation, samples, all uh, such components that um, 
are already helping the new team members to add their corpora to Parliament because Parliament is not a static structure. You can add your corpus uh, to our data set. And what is even more important uh, than the technical infrastructure we managed to build uh, is the pan-European community uh, around our project. Uh, its members are providing linguistic expertise, computational expertise. Uh, they help others by developing tutorials, creating impact stories, organizing hackathons. But they also use the parliament results themselves, uh, for example, for creating language models to be used in data science, but also by writing scientific articles or developing showcases which analyze cross-lingual data in various ways. So I'm going to show you three of such showcases now. And uh, one such study used the familiar LDA text mining method uh, of topic modeling to extract topics that characterize the debate during the pandemic. And uh, the study was led by the questions you can see on screen. So which topics are characteristic of the corpus as a whole? Uh, which topics these, M these MPs debate the most and which were more frequent before and during the pandemic? So that we can compare these two periods. So the results on the uh, British subset uh, of uh, the Parliament Corpus showed that uh, speeches addressed various topics concerning MPs' constituents, from access to healthcare to discrimination against minorities. And during the pandemic, deals, voting, government, people, and extensions were uh, most frequently discussed. Concer considering the word referendum uh, is also quite prominent, uh, speeches characterized by this topic probably uh, referred to Brexit. And surprisingly, the word virus was quite infrequent. Uh, for all showcases, you can see the links and citations at the end of the slide. So you can read more. Uh, another study uh, was conducted during the Digital Humanities Hackathon last year uh, in Helsinki, when uh, we used our data to uh, analyze how parliamentary debate manifests political power uh, and this was done by analyzing the networks that emerge from parliamentar parliamentarians mentioning one another in three countries, Slovenia, Spain, and the UK. And two research questions, again, were ask uh, about argumentative power. So how can speeches given by MPs uh, and the mentions of them give insights into the power of MPs within political debates? And the second question about structural power, uh, how do the speech practices of female and male MPs relate to topic and power uh, distribution. So first, how was it done? First, uh, the um, subcorpora were created by handpicking topics related to healthcare and education. These are examples of so-called soft topics that are most frequently talked about by female MPs. Uh, and finance and energy, these are hard topics talked about by male MPs. And there was also immigration as an uh, in the ambiguous topic. So one of the main findings was that uh, even such a simple setting uh, managed to generate networks which reflected the existing structural powers of, so for example, ministry positions of the MPs uh, within specific topics. And the third showcase uh, was by Turkish researchers that, uh, who studied the polarization of politics uh, by assigning uh, emotion scores to speeches. So we had this uh, six... Uh, emotions by Plutchik, anger, fear, disgust, sadness, and surprise and joy. And they, they used the Turkish corpus. And um, over this data set, they used machine learning models uh, to assign emotion scores to speeches. And then they observed changes in relation to uh, major political and social events in Turkey. And their findings, you can probably already see on screen that anger uh, is the, the, was the dominant emotion in the parliament. I guess we, we can all relate to that somehow. Probably we can repeat such studies in our data. Uh, and uh, this is also quite, I guess, uh, I don't know whether it's obvious or, or not, uh, that the ruling party was showing more stable emotions compared to the opposition. You can have your uh, idea on why, uh, why it was like that. So these are showcases, but uh, we strongly believe that uh, uh, we will be able to compare multilingual parliamentary data 
with such usage examples uh, and uh, it will boost research in digital humanities, linguistics, political science, social science and other uh, similar fields. To achieve that, the project has established a strategy uh, for handling parliamentary data and uh, processing so that different reference corpora can be uh, produced with parliamentary refer, uh, records and different analysis could be use the same methodology we are proposing uh, and we were showing. So uh, to make it even more appealing, uh, we are uh, constantly improving our model. We plan to further develop the encoding standard for parliamentary data to uh, cover more specific and detailed metadata uh, across languages in Parliament, such as whether a speaker represents uh, the government or which ministry or what uh, the political orientation of the par parties is, so uh, it, it can give you some more fine-grade uh, abilities to analyze this data. And as you can expect, the Parliament is uh, is a constant e effort. It, it, it continues as we speak. And uh, recently, we have just added 10 more languages to the data set um, as compared with this uh, 17 languages uh, I was telling you about. This was the first phase. Uh, and we also ha have created a new subcorpus that um, started with the date of invasion of Russia to Ukraine. So we can analyze this in uh, this data in this respect too, or compare pre-war and after-war statements. And uh, we are now in the process of uh, automatically translating all data to English uh, and tagging the data semantically to make them even more directly comparable across languages so that the users that don't speak a particular language, they uh, can still analyze the data uh, in this language. And we also performed a multimodal experiment that uh, aligns audio recordings with transcriptions uh, to boost research in speech technology, of course, not for all languages, I guess four languages were processed this way because it's not always uh, easy to get audio data even from, from your parliaments. And so we uh, have even more plans, so uh, national data sets uh, could also be compared with the data coming from the European Parliament and regional parliaments. Uh, we all know that uh, parliamentary data, as we call it, is not just debates, but also voting results or uh, the documents related to the lawmaking process. Uh, so adding such documents and such data to the data sets will give uh, the people and the researchers even more analytic capabilities, possibilities. And uh, there's also a lot to be done with uh, new and emerging technologies uh, concentrating on uh, either processing multimodal data or uh, producing uh, live data sets available on the fly because data is constantly flowing from our parliaments. So uh, it's almost it, uh, but I just wanted to uh, leave you with two key takeaways. The first of it is that uh, we have created a solid data intensive infrastructure that uh, can be used by various analytic tools to make parliamentary debates across Europe more transparent, more comparable, uh, by, both by researchers and by, by citizens. And the second thing is that uh, we believe it's just a starting point of a long-term impact action of bringing the accurate and trustworthy information coming from our na national parliaments uh, to all parties interested in using it in a cross-lingual perspective and it was never possible before, so I guess it's quite a success. Thank you very much. Thank you for your attention. Now we can answer several questions. I have um, a parliament data for the Belgian parliament, which is already in there, but I have videos with, um, and they have two audio signals, namely the, the Dutch and the French. So if the speaker speaks Dutch, then you have the, well, they have three audio signals, the original and the translation. And I have two um, signers, one in Flemish sign language and one in, uh, French, well, Belgian French sign language. So it's a very interesting parallel uh, corpus. But I'm wondering what it would, what would be the effort to uh, align this with 
the data that's already in there, because I guess you covered that period for the Belgian parliament, as far as I know. Um, do you have any ideas how, how difficult or how easy or what would be the steps or um, to, to do that, to, to link what I have, namely a hard drive full of record, video recordings with um, what you have? Yes, it's, it's a difficult question because it calls for a separate sub-project, I would say, that uh, we, we had several such sub-projects inside Parliament so far, but uh, I guess the complexity of it is similar to aligning audio and, and text data when, when, you call about, when you say about sound, sign language. Uh, so, uh, yes, you, you are very welcome to, to do it. Uh, it I didn't say that, but the data that we have uh, starts uh, in 2015, so I guess that's the period you, uh, you you also cover. And you can take the data, try to experiment yourself, uh, probably get some help, but we don't have any uh, people uh, that are familiar with sign languages, I guess, in at least in the team currently. Maybe Dario or Tomas wants to comment something? That's um, I personally haven't worked on the speech part of parliament. That's Nikola Ljubesic, um, also in Slovenia at our institute. Uh, so he has been doing the audio. For audio, I think they used forced alignment. Uh, I'm not quite sure how well that worked because a kind of problem with parliamentary data is what we have are these uh, redacted, I think they're called transcriptions. So you don't have... Uh, the way they actually spoke it, right? But something that sounds better. Uh, so that might be problematic if you have the raw speed signal. Um, as far as uh, also other modalities are concerned, I think the biggest problem is the actual alignment. Yeah, because you, there's too much data to do it by hand. So there must be some automatic way how to do it. I have no idea whether that exists for signing. I would think not. Uh, but for speech data that kind of depends on how much the, the transcript has been changed was quite well, right? So technically, well, we, have the, we have the speech data and then the, the, the signing is live interpreting. So it's it's just lagging a bit behind the speech data there. Uh -huh. So if you have the speech alignment, you would then also have automatically the sign alignment more or less. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, as far as encoding that, uh, I don't think it's such a problem. Mm. as far as actually doing something with it, that could be a bit problematic, yeah, because you need to store and present all this data. Uh, but yeah, it kind of sounds interesting. I'm not sure if we have the capacity inside the current parliament to address uh, new challenges, but yeah, this could be something that Nicola should be asked uh, rather than me. Okay, so whenever there is a need for an New ID. I have something ready. Okay. <laughs> Very good. I have a follow-up question on this. Uh, first of all, Matthew, thank you very much for this nice presentation and, of course, the work you have done and, and, and the colleagues in, in this project. But um, I, I wonder, and, and I want to know, um, how do you actually uh, identify languages in multilingual parliaments? I mean, I'm sure that in Catalan parliament you can find the... Uh, the Castilian and Catalan or, or in Galician as well. And uh, Belgium, we've heard, you know, of course. Yeah. And um, how do you differentiate, for instance, you've listed here that there will be also material or language data from Bosnia and Herzegovina. How do you dif differentiate there? And do you identify between uh, Bosnian, Croatian and Serbian? That's what I would like to, to know. Yes, I don't have a ready uh, answer to that. Uh, it, uh, the data is coming from different parliaments, so they are separated somehow. But uh, as far as Bosnia is concerned, also Nikola, again, Lubesic was uh, involved in that. And probably he is the guy to ask uh, this question. Uh, so I, I, I don't quite know what happens with this language. I can tell you that, well, in, in Polish data, we don't mark um, citations or, or parts in different languages, but you don't have many of them 
because that's that's the the idea is yes? that you have you can have data in several languages as far as, far as catalan or basque is concerned we have different corpora for these different languages from coming from different parliaments yeah but then you might have in catalan parliament speeches in castilian and catalan as well in interchange so how do you mark the do do, I, do do you identify languages that's what i'm asking because if you don't do that you you might have a noisy data uh, maybe I can at least partially answer this. Uh, I personally haven't done work on any of the parliaments because I'm just overseeing the the corpora and the encoding of the corpora. So this is very much a bottom-up project. It's the encoding of each particular parliament is up to the partner. Uh, but I do know that for the for Belgium, uh, Norwegian. Uh, Catalan Parliament, uh, they're bilingual, and the partners have actually marked that. I'm not sure whether they use language identification or whether this is actually marked up in the source that they get. I do not know. Uh, for the Bosnian Parliament, as far as I know, the whole corpus is just marked as Bosnian, even yeah. though there might be regional differences in there. But then again, I mean, the whole uh, Parliament is Creative Commons, so anybody can take it, do it better. Uh, and we hope somebody will actually do it better at some point if i can just add um we have also incorporated in the second installation of the project uh ukrainian um and this is a very interesting data set because unlike most national parliaments in ukrainian they have a very interesting uh multilingual situation not just locally they started with predominantly russian then they switched to predominantly ukrainian this not only uh, switches languages but also uh, script uh, but now during war they have an unusually high number of international speakers in the parliament who mostly speak uh, English, and this is non-native English in many cases. Um, so it's uh, an interesting data set from that perspective. And I know that the authors of that subcorpus take great pains to correctly identify, differentiate between Russian and Ukraine, because this is politically sensitive. So they, they do uh, pay attention to that. And they annotate the English parts of the corpus as well. So can I ask one more question? And, uh, are there any future plans on how to develop this project further? Instead of, uh, apart from maybe adding more data, I mean, are there already plans, I mean, in some countries to actually build some research projects on it and uh, apply for funding for that? Because it looks like a very interesting set. So is anyone aware of such endeavors? Yes, I guess that's the question to the audience. If you are aware of any funding possibilities outside Clarine, it would be great. Uh, Francisca is aware. Um, it's not a funding opportunity, but it's a realized uh, uh, funding application uh, in the context of um, the project EOSC Future. There was room for so-called science projects, so projects that would make use of, of uh, the collaboration between clusters and the services offered. Um, uh, and there we proposed uh, to do some work on the harmonization of um, the vocabularies for uh, COVID-19 in both the humanities and social, social sciences on the one hand and the health domain on the other hand. And this is, uh, has been taken up by uh, the University of Antwerp and um, they will uh, apply that uh, harmonized vocabulary also to, uh, to the parliament data uh, and, and also to a collection of social media data. So there is a, um, a first step, or well, you can call it a research question yet maybe, but, but definitely the, the, the scope of things that you can uh, do and combine uh, in, in that context will, uh, will enlarge and that will maybe lead to uh, even wider possibilities to answer questions about parliamentary data and, uh, and, and the link with uh, health data. So that's ongoing. And that's supposed to end somewhere uh, this year. 
<laughs> and maybe I could add something. I mean, this is just something that came up and I used to be the program committee for the cluster two. I mean, there's a topic on democracy and I could imagine that the program committee members would like to push a topic like that in there. But for them, then it's important to have like a short piece of text, which really needs to be less than half a page so that they might forward it into the, the program committee and then forward it to the European Commission for consideration. So that might be an interesting option for those involved in the Parliament project, just to write something short and send it to all the national delegates and see if they could forward it to their program committee member. I'd be happy to do that, for example. I mean, I'm not in there myself anymore, but uh, I know who is now. So. Uh, yeah, in addition to um, being forward looking and uh, trying to make the processes uh, more automatic for new incoming data from parliaments, uh, as Machi has suggested, uh, I have received quite a lot of interest from the community of uh, historians, uh, researchers interested in historical parliamentary data, and they would like to add historical data to the parliament data set as well, because they want to look at processes in a diachronic way. But here we very quickly run into issue copyright issues because historical parliamentary data, like the French parliament, hundreds of years of data, this is not open source. So uh, there's another barrier, barrier that we will need to solve uh, soon. Yes, I guess uh, we, we uh, can follow different uh, paths uh, in different disciplines. Uh, when we have our data, I, I can tell you about the Polish data, because just today someone wrote me that the Polish historical data, they want to add some data to our Polish uh, parliamentary corpus, and they are already doing it, some external money, they found even funding for that. So I guess that's the way to proceed, but well, it will be great to have some coordinated actions for all of, all of us, all parliament parties too. Thank you.